Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shark 33 with the semifinals of the 1v1 July tournament, or at least a semifinals match. Because we're going to have Randy and Lowry. Cuban and Kareem Raptor have not quite played their game yet. I hope they do. I don't want them to be watching this. Cuban and Kareem Raptor, if you're watching this, play your game. Please. We can get that through, and then I can get to semifinals, semifinals, and then bronze match finals. That'd be great. So, starting out, it'll be on Quicksilver. Be very interesting because Randy is one of the best players. I think. Oh, odd. Currently not ranked, but Randy is definitely one of the best players. I don't know why their ranking isn't showing in the lobby, but yeah, as in Golda level good. Very much keen on using a lot of raiders and raider micro. That's been his style in general. Lowry, on the other hand, is a big fan of heavy tanks. I don't think we. He's not going to do them here, but. Big fan of heavy tanks, and overall, also a very strong player. Currently ranked number six. And I, yes, it does sound okay. I think I need to actually turn the music volume up a bit. Some of these new songs are considerably quieter than the old ones were. Anyway, Randy going for an air start right off the bat. Looks like a comps are trying to win quickly. Lowry on the other hand going forward and might okay proxy hovercraft. Interesting choice. I do see the value of it against an air snipe, but at the same time, that's still already a raven. We still have a raven coming in here. Gonna get rid of a metal extractor, and it's gonna slow down the production of a flail, which is basically inevitable. I mean, that's the thing. Hovercraft factories can build flails. Flails are really good against air. But Randy is... Well, not quite set up to... I don't know, building more ravens. There we go. Building more Ravens, and... Okay, good. Cuban and King Raptor already playing. Awesome. Oh, they're on game three. Oh, even better. Okay, great. So, yeah, as long as they wait for me for Google Frog, whoever wins between the two of them. Okay, so they're on the last game. So we will have semifinals, semifinals. Everything will be all semifinals. Okay, that is... That is good. However... Like I said, back to the game. Air start is for Randy. Randy is actually slowing down a bit, though. Building up metal extractors, not focusing on the economy. It looks like prioritizing, get prioritizing the commander, prioritizing economy construction. Not really focusing on destroying much of anything. I mean, there's no... Oh, that's a little weird. Anyway, there's no flails coming in either. So, what? Seriously, no flails? I mean, Loudry's commander is two shots away from being killed. A couple of ravens come in and it's dead. And actually, this raid. No, this defender's gonna go down. Not the radar, surprisingly enough. Lowry actually has. Well, okay, not great vision. Randy, on the other hand, has no radar. None at all. Purely line of sight. Though, admittedly, Randy has air units, so that kind of makes sense, because Randy can just scout out with air units. I just send air units around and they do all the scouting, because who needs to have radar when you have air? I'm not being facetious, actually. It's like, when you have that, those units moving around, you have. You're moving line of sight. As long as you keep track of what's going on, you actually don't need radar that badly, but you are also starting with air, which is a bit of a risky start. Still, there's enough ravens here that a comm snipe is possible, and at this stage in the game, it would be deadly. And still, no flails. Lowry building up a lot of defenders, built up, built up a couple quills, but no flails. And the longer that Randy waits, the more defenders there will be. Oh, the middle of the swift could take most of the hits for that one, but still, more defenders over time. And Randy, unfortunately for him, has his commander on wait. Not sure what he was planning on doing with that. Commander was just sort of sitting there on wait. Not really doing much. Well, there we go. There is the attack. The swift swift leading the charge, and that's the suicide charge, mind you. Swift leading the suicide charge, forcing a couple of the defenders to use their missiles up. And there come the Ravens to go for the kill. And, ooh, nice dodge! Lowry actually successfully dodged there, and the commander survives. 40 health, but the commander is still alive. And one of the ravens actually goes down. That was not the best thing that could have happened. So Lowry likely to get a quill over here to help repair the commander. Yep, there we go, there's that quill. I'm gonna repair that commander up. If we can get it up above 800 health, it will survive, although even then... Hard to say because that was a really nice dodge. Unless Lowry can pull out that dodge again, I think the next Raven coming in is going to kill it. In fact, 
Not even near 800 health yet. It's just a matter of how long Randy waits. And now that both Ravens are up, I don't think it's going to be very long at all. But I apparently am wrong. In fact, Randy going for a light vehicle switch. Not going for the Raven attack. And Louder's Commander not quite above the 800 HP threshold. But this is two Ravens. So honestly, it's as long as that commander's not at full health, it's going to die if it's hit. But no, not going for that. Lowry would be killed by that. I'm not kidding. Lowry would lose half of their economy, plus their big expansion force, if that commander dies. But Randy just scouting out beforehand, just making sure to know what's going on. Does he have a half-built metal extractor? Hopefully doesn't kill it, because that would be a bad move right now. Go for a complete one instead, if you're going to go for any of them. And we have darts as well, so the Light Vehicle Factory is up, the darts are up, Masons mostly are up, and Daggers coming in to basically keep Randy honest. Because, oh, there goes the Defender, and at this point the Caretaker is the best option, but... Actually, no, it's not, not really. Not the best option, the Factory is still a good option. And the Raven's going around, dealing some damage, but not ultimately doing much, and Lowry's Commander at full health! Right back up to full health, so... Mason trying to build up, and Daggers trying to avoid the Scorchers, but we saw before that Daggers do not do especially well against Scorchers. It's really tough for them to actually deal with Scorchers. Though Lowry's doing a nice job microing. Lowry's really showing how much Daggers can do, even with Scorchers on their tail. Which is actually quite a bit. In fact, that's another Defender out, but that's... Ooh! Hid behind the Masons that the Defender couldn't hit, but ultimately got killed by a Scorcher. Still a good choice there, and Lowry... Pushing forward directly. Un Defender's getting a hit. But still, that Raven taking a lot of damage. Randy's commander moving forward. And it is actually Beam Laser Recon Com, level 1. Lowry also Recon Com, but has not upgraded at all. And Lowry going for more daggers. Possibly. What else, is, what else could Lowry be going for? Not much besides Defenders and Daggers. And unfortunately for Lowry, these Scorches are going to get in and going to kill the dagger. Tear pretty much everything else apart. Main base is not too healthy right now, I'm afraid. And the only advantage Lowry has is economy. Though this can translate into a military advantage right now. A lot of that's actually reclaim. No, reclaim is for energy, not for metal, but... Okay. Not sure what Lowry is building with all this. Lowry really isn't building much with all this, and... Has managed to stop... Although... Not without everything catching on fire. Oh, that was running a forest fire first. No, I don't actually see this often. But yeah, there, there it is. There's forest fire. Those happen. Gets rid of a lot of available energy. Old TA mechanic, but it doesn't really come up much. I don't think it actually deals damage to units in the forest that's on fire. I could be wrong, though. Oh, right, scoreboard. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. At least it should be obvious if it's... If it says 2-1 or something, or 2-0, that... It's... it's wrong. <laughs> oh yeah, font size should also be bigger. Anyway, back to the game. Randy is going to be getting rid of a few metal extractors, which is... Oh, that's a good thing to get rid of. Keeping Lowry from expanding too heavily. And also, trying to get rid of the daggers, but actually, in the numbers that exist right now, the daggers are doing well. Slashers are up as well, though Randy... Not sure how much offense they can be done with that. They can slow push. You can leapfrog with the, with the slashers and actually do a fair amount of damage. It's just kind of tricky. And Lowry, having the fast units, able to harass quite a lot, keeping Randy's economy down and ultimately getting rid of the southwest base. Sorry, southeast base. Or the southwest base, that'd be huge. No, southeast base. Get rid of the southeast base. Get rid of this mason. Get rid of all the metal extractors and then just move through here. And get rid of the main base, not the main base, but the light vehicle factory base as well. And we'll see how that works, but it looks like it's going to be... Well, that's... Metal extractor's down, and solar collector possibly going to go down? I don't know. Seems kind of unlikely. Nope, never mind. The dagger's just avoiding that entirely. Not even bothering. Going around the side instead. And Ravager is coming up for Randy, which is going to help against the defenders. That's exactly what's needed, and it gives the Slashers some room to breathe, some room to get in and actually position themselves to get rid of the defenders. 
and Raven's coming in as well, so this defender line is about to go down. There's another defender line behind it, though. This whole defender line here is going to be problematic. But Louder's commander once again under threat. And I think Randy this time is going to be able to pull it off. Now, Randy... Randy is very much ahead here. There's no doubt about it. Randy has... Military lead, an economic evenness, although Lowry is not on the energy to really use that 21 metal. Getting more solar collectors for that purpose, but really doesn't have that, and despite the losses, Randy is still basically ahead economically. And making sure that Lowry does not get ahead him themselves, but Randy a little uncertain about being able to attack here, which is not a surprise. There are a lot of defenders here. But now Randy is going for it. There's This is probably going to be it for game one pretty quickly now. And we're going to have this entire defender line go down. Mace coming in to try to help defend. But even then, I'm not sure how well it's going to work. It's going to work decently well against the Scorcher, but against the Ravager, I doubt it's going to do much. And Scorcher is helping out against the defenders. Just very cleanly getting in here, getting rid of all these defenders, and ultimately getting rid of the entire defense line. Pushing Lowry into a corner, and that should be it. I mean, really, there's not much more for it. Kind of curious where. Oh, there's there's the commander. Randy's commander's over in the southeast. And yep, that's GG. Lowry surrenders, and we have game one's winner, who is Randy. That's also his name. So, let's see if yep, yeah, we are on to. So Cubay wanting his King Raptor 2-1. So Cubay Google Frog will be after Randy Lowry, assuming they actually respect my wishes and do not just play it right away. And they do respect my wishes because they're actually watching. So we'll have game two once the map is chosen by Lowry. And then from there, we'll be on to well, game two. And actually, guys are planes. Okay, that's the map that's gonna be. What the heck? I. How? No way. Oh shoot! Sorry about that. <sighs> okay. Bracket got messed up. But yeah, the. Be back in a second. Okay, I'm back. And we're on to game two, which is going to be on Geyser Plains. So Randy is ahead by one. But Lowry still has a chance. This is game two, so Lowry wins this and then wins the following game. Then we shall have game with Lowry versus whoever wins being Google Frog and Cubay. Or the other semifinals match. Let's see how this goes. Players are just setting up. Waiting for them to get going. So, yeah, that was rather interesting last game. I mean, definitely hovercrafts are powerful. It's very different from the last time. I mean, last time we saw it was jump versus spiders, and that was air versus hovercraft, and then light vehicle versus hovercraft with some air support. Like I said, that map does support a fair amount. And Lowry, once again, back in the game, going for Hovercraft. Hovercraft start on Geyser Plains can work, but it's a little bit interesting. So is Randy. I'm sorry, when did the meta shift to make Hovercraft the best factory in the world? Because I don't remember that. I don't remember seeing that in any of the games I've casted in the last couple weeks. I've seen them a few times, but not the new meta. I never saw them as the new meta. So this is new to me. But we have Dagger Contact and Randy coming in with their own dagger. Able to do nothing because the Lotus blocks it. And similarly, Randy has a Lotus up as well. But Lowry a bit faster with his Lotus than Randy was. And Lowry now gets, well, some damage to the melee strider. Probably gonna kill, not going to kill it. No, that, that melee strider is not going to die. Neither player able to deal any damage to the other. And Lowry is, well... Basically ahead slightly by having a couple more met a couple more 
Solar Collector is taking less damage on their Metal Extractors. Honestly, not much is different, but... Yeah, it's even. That's what it is. It's just even. Neither player really has an advantage right now. Loudly has a bit more energy, but ultimately it's about the same. However, Loudly very quickly expanding to the north and also expanding towards the south is going for the expansion here. Randy not expanding to the south. He, they're going for the center. They're going for the center four and a half metal, while Lowry is going for the south six and a half. But Lowry will win out, but it's a little bit tricky. I mean, Randy is harder to defend position, but it's also the center of the map, so it's closer to the opponent. It's a bit easier to hit them from. Mind you, I don't know if Randy's going to go for a proxy factory, but still, a bit easier to hit them from if you do build a proxy factory there. And Randy has... About the same for units. Getting a mace, however. Getting a mace and scalpels. Mace coming up as well for Lowry, but the scalpels will counter that. Neither player really focusing too much on daggers. There are four daggers, two each. Randy going along the north side to try to harass out, as is Lowry. Both players deciding the north side is the way to go. And... No, it's not, actually. It really doesn't make a difference. However, south side attack does spot Lowry's commander going towards the south expansions, making it very clear what Lowry has planned, which is, of course, to take the big expansions that are worth a ton of cash. Well, Randy, on the other hand, it's northwest with his dagger, just to make sure that nothing goes on here without knowing. And the center is being taken by Randy. He does have the metal extractor here, but Lowry is ahead, has taken, or is taking the metal extractor to the south. 2.5 metal extractor. As Randy builds up Lotus here, and Randy is just slowly but surely getting slightly behind. Still, those scalpels, those scalpels are going to win Randy the game if anything, if nothing else does. Especially if, if they're used right, put in the right spot, because Lowry has a mace. So it's kind of even as far as mace wars go, although admittedly Randy just lost the mace war. But the scalpel wins the mace war. Scalpels just kill maces outright. But Randy also has radar coverage of the entire map, pretty much. Lowry, on the other hand, also has radar coverage of the entire map, so both players are basically entirely aware of what the other is up to. And Randy gets the bright idea to go south. Oops. And that is going to be fairly useful. Yeah, Randy's commander going south. Ah, there we go. There's, there's the name tags. So Randy's commander is going south to try to take the expansion, but Lowry already has, and already has a decent amount of defense around it, too. Scalpel's going to do what they can, but their best bet was against the mace, or attacking the main base directly. I mean, they can work against stack defenses without too much issue, but pushing is going to be tough, and Randy knows that going for maces instead for the, for how tough it is. And maces as well. We're going to have mace scalpel wars. This is what the game is. Geyser Plains, Hovercraft, Mirror, and Lowry losing some of their radar. Okay, losing the radar coverage of Randy's main base. Does know what's there, but doesn't know what's there right now. Oops. So Randy pushing forward with their commander, not even bothering with the south base. Just going straight for the main, trying to cut it at the throat. Though, economically speaking, that's actually down here for Lowry. But still, Randy is trying to... Tear apart what could be tear apart. But even then, it's just... Randy is leaving the commander in front of a mace. This is not going to work out well at all. Randy about to lose their commander, and down their commander goes. Randy just lost their commander. And with that, I think Randy may not be in the best position. Hasn't lost the game. It's much harder to win at this stage, but hasn't lost. Still, Scalpel's coming in. And a scalpel counter as well for Lowry. With daggers, actually daggers is more so the counter. Scalpel against Mace. Scalpel does win if the scalpel's out of range, but unfortunately the scalpel was not. Lowry coming along the south side, or coming from the south side with a mace to attack the center expansion. Just to slow down Randy's economy even further. After killing the commander, that was a pretty big blow. And a mace coming up, which the scalpel is going to try to get rid of and successfully do so. Oh, yeah. Successfully do so. The hovercraft platform is very nearly destroyed. The mace is coming in here, getting rid of the economy fairly effectively. But even then, Randy is about to destroy this factory. One more shot. 
One more shot from the scalpel, and that factory is going down. And down it goes. Factory's dead. Lowry out of a factory needs to rebuild. Needs to rebuild urgently. There is a mace. There was a mace. There's still a mace. Over to the north. Which is about the only chance that Lowry has. Randy is well aware of this, though. As is Lowry. And neither player really has radar into the other's base any further, but they both have at least radar coverage of their own base. That being said, Lowry losing their own base. Lowry, Lowry's base is going away from them very quickly, slipping away. And nothing to defend. Randy's just tearing apart the mace. Well, Lowry takes the entire north side of the map. And Randy's da dagger left a while ago, so doesn't really see this too much. And Hovercraft being rebuilt with the caretaker's support. But even then, I don't know. It's really not much. There's really not much Lowry can do. Because the mace is just slowly but surely coming down here, and I mean the harassment never really happened over the north. This is where that mace ended up, which helps a bit, but not much. And then this mace, go back, get repaired, come back into the fight, and there are scalpels coming in, which is good. But even then, I mean, Randy just has, while well, an economic disadvantage, does have position advantage, I guess? Hmm. Well, not even a military advantage. In fact, Lowry is still slightly ahead. The large part of that is the commander. So if we discount the commander, then yeah, Randy has a military advantage of about a factor of three. But a couple scalpels are up. They should be able to beat the mace, no problem. And then I think actually two. Let's see, one scalpel deals 620 damage. Maces have yeah. So two scalpels will one shot a mace together. However, they're going to go for the Lotus first. Nope, they're going to go for the Mace first. Are they both going to go for the Mace? No, they're not even going to attack. That was awkward, so no, they're going to go for the Lotus instead. And there goes the Lotus. That's down. Lowry still has the factory up, but nothing being built out of it yet. Trying to just rebuild as best as possible. Reclaim, rebuild. Go for what can be done. So Lowry might still pull this out, but it's going to be a tough one. And unfortunately, it didn't deal any damage to the mace. Looks like it dodged it out. One of the maces did die, though. One mace died, another mace lives, and Lowry continues to build up more maces and scalpels. Not sure this game is going to go over quickly. Like, hovercraft games do not end quickly. If there's anything that we can see from that, I mean, okay, that one comic catcher game, I suppose, that dagger-heavy game. But other than that, yeah, they don't seem to end quickly, do they? I mean, Lowry is pushing pretty hard, but Randy has now finally gotten an economic advantage. Oh, no, that's mostly reclaim, so no, actually, hasn't. Northside has been destroyed as well, so Randy is getting an economic advantage by way of metal extractors. Slowly but surely along the north side of the map, because the north side has a lot of consistent income. Nothing as flashy as these single four metal base spots, but every pair is basically four metal, so there's still a lot of good metal there. And Randy coming in, gonna take some damage to the scalpel, but actually gonna lose the mace. Nope, that mace is going down. No, it's not! That mace barely survives right before the reload time was done. The mace manages to kill the scalpel, and Lowry continues to be set back. Not getting a large enough force at once before attacking. <sighs> that mace. Try to get rid of Lowry's commander, but I mean Lowry does not obviously want to lose. That's a really important thing here. Lowry, if Lowry loses, then that's, that's match. I mean, if Lowry loses, Randy goes on to the finals, and Lowry is on the bronze match. Lowry wins, Randy goes to the bronze match, bronze match and Lowry goes to the finals. I mean, this is basically for at least second place. I mean, if Lowry wins this, he has to, they have to win another one. But if Randy wins this, it's over. And Lowry has a good chance to win this. It's a matter of having the right amount of units in the right composition in the right place at the right time. It's tricky, but it's tricky for both players. Neither one has a decisive advantage at this point. Lowry had an economic advantage for a while, but it hasn't really panned out to much. And unfortunately, a quill getting destroyed by a couple maces. And it's really that time and place problem. It, Lowry does have radar and does know what units are going around. Randy's the same, but much less radar. Still, Lowry doesn't seem to have... The ability to quite push back as much as they'd like. 
Which is a little unfortunate, though Lowry does still have their commander. Unupgraded, but still exists as a, a support commander. Reclaiming their old base just to turn it into their new base, which is basically their old base once again. Try to rebuild that. And pushing a lot of that into the factory to build up scalpels as well. Like I said, two scalpels will one-shot a mace, but more will be needed if you want to one-shot several maces. And I don't think Lowry has enough. I think, honestly, Randy's going to push in the death blow right now. This is going to be... The Lotuses are going to make it tough, but this is going to be... This is going to be problematic. In fact, no, not even problematic. The Lotuses are not even going to be an obstacle, actually, apparently. Lotuses do nothing! But at the same time, Mace tries to get in and doesn't manage against other Maces. Okay, the Lotus does something. It does gradually over time with enough Lotus's kill. And down goes that Mace to a Defender, ultimately. But still, Randy taking the north side of the map. Lowry trying to kite out the Mace. To point out that Maces actually do have 0.1 speed advantage. Not sure where the unit is, but yeah. The speed advantage of 0.1. They are slightly faster than Scalpels. But ultimately, that scalpel did win. And Northside getting harassed as well. Lowry not letting that go easy. And another... Oh crap, another scalpel's come in. More scalpels are coming in. Three scalpels, two of which in play, and another one is one that has been destroyed. Trying to get rid of this mace. And able to kill it, so that mace does go down. And Lowry might actually be pushing in for the win. Randy only has 600 medal worth of army. While Lowry is starting to get... Taking some good exchanges, making an army advantage. Just killing those maces and ultimately will be... Well, will be a matter of how careful Lowry is. Lowry has to still be very careful about what they do. And they're getting their economy going, yes. But, and their economy is an advantage. And their military is at an advantage, even if you discount the commander. It's still two times advantage. But I still... I think it's too close to call as Lowry wins. It's just not quite enough to say that. It's close. It definitely is close. And this Halbert here is doing a wonderful job of keeping Randy from getting too big. But it's not going to be enough. Not in its own, but still it's going to help a lot. Actually, Scalpel being spotted out and Halbert coming in and getting rid of a metal extractor. That was a good kill. Got to get another metal extractor. I mean, these halberds are doing a great job of harassing. While Lowry expands out, builds more metal extractors, and ultimately gets an even more secure economic advantage. Building up more halberds and scalpels, and probably going to go for... Well, half a dozen scalpels now. So, yeah, it could pretty much go for... A very powerful anti-mace attack. Surprisingly, no daggers being built. I'm really surprised at that. Like, daggers would kind of be the counter right now. But... Nothing is being built in that regard. No daggers, no riot units of any, sorry, no raiders of any sort. Lowry taking back their old base. I mean, their commander's just rebuilding everything. I think that this might end up being Lowry's game. It's getting more and more in Lowry's advantage. And it's not over yet by any stretch, but it's still getting into Lowry's advantage. The Lowry just needs to be really careful about how they take this exchange. If this exchange goes in Lowry's favor, then it's Lowry's game. And that's a good start for Lowry, although admittedly one of them does one of the scalpels goes down to one of Randy's scalpels, and so does another one. Oh boy, that's not working out too well for Lowry, although admittedly got a good position now. Halbert helping out, but unfortunately for Randy sorry, for Lowry, one of the Halberts goes down, but still another Halbert really helping out to get rid of these guys. Halberts do deal 150 damage per shot, so they do get rid of they get rid of scalpels in about five shots. Scalpels get rid of each other in two, and it looks like Lowry did win that exchange. It was kind of close, but Lowry won it. And from there, I think Lowry is going to take the game. Taking map control has economic advantage and has had it for most of the game. Ever since killing Randy's commander, Lowry has had an economic advantage. And continuing to raid along the north side, I think this is going to be the last raid. This scalpel about to go down. This is probably going to be the last raid before a major base assault to win the game. Maces are being built up. Mace, Halberd, Scalpel. Yeah, that's a base assault force. Already. Actually, immediately, Scalpel's just every sort of assault force. And that will probably bring us to game three. See, though, one of the Scalpels does go down. Oh, that is bad. That is not what... That is not what Lowry wants to have happen. But even then, 
Lowry just needs to build up an army and push. Once the army is built up. But even that, I mean, how much? Lowry has got a lot offensively. Yeah, Lowry's got quite a bit offensively, actually. 3.8 metal. Most of that isn't the commander. Like, 2.6 of that is not the commander. So, nearly triple. And with that said, Randy actually does go for daggers, which is going to possibly turn the tide. It's going to turn into, again, although Randy's still on the back foot, it's still going to be tough for Randy to get back in here. But daggers are a very good choice. I mentioned before, that's the thing to do. Get the daggers. But even then, their halberds, the maces there, and the scalpels are there. As long as they're together, which they, to be noted, aren't. But if they are together, then it's fine. There's no problem whatsoever. If they're apart, it's a bit of a problem, but there's also no scalpels up yet, so honestly, these scalpels are just used for killing the mace. And I think the other mace can do it just fine. And pointing out, when a spec's pointing out, QB pointing out in spec, make peck bank penetrator! Yeah, well, maybe. That could actually work okay. Although, honestly, this, that's a thousand metal that really, why bother? Could be spent on a couple maces or five scalpels. That would do the trick. Yeah, Loudly going in for harassment, trying to figure out where Randy has set up, and not finding it quite yet. I mean, Randy's mostly gone on reclaim. And Solo Collector's going down just to be sure, but ultimately, Randy's going to try to stop this, and I think that actually... Oh, actually, it looks like Loudly is out of position slightly. These Halber's doing a pretty good job trying to get rid of the glaives. Sorry, the glaives. The daggers. Practically, I've seen far more Hovercraft than I've seen Cloakybot in this tournament so far. And Randy, GG's, we are on to Game 3. So, nicely done, Lowry. That's Game 3, and I should point out that's also the very first time that Randy has actually lost a game in this tournament. No, sir, no, Yogstoth. Yogstoth took a game off him, too. I didn't watch that one, but yeah. Yogstoth did take a game off Randy, and Lowry has also taken a game off Randy. Once the map is chosen, we will have another of Game 3. Not sure where. That's Randy's choice. Probably going to be CCR knowing him, but we'll see. Oh! I called it! Did I not call it? Comma Catcher Redux. Please make it quick. I guess the game is going to start in just a moment, so we'll be back when that happens. Stay tuned, I guess. I don't know if I'm even going to stop this and quiet the sound here. No, we're starting immediately. No delays here. Very efficient. I like that. I very much like that. Although, admittedly, I apologize to the viewers. No real intermissions except for the occasional ones. So, yeah, I hope you got your popcorn beforehand, before all this started, because it's a little late now. Although, admittedly, we will have an intermission between the semifinals, but... Otherwise, well, not a long one, mind you. But otherwise, it's not going to be that different. So players are just readying up, and this is one of Randy's favorite maps. I don't know how well Lowry will do here, but I'm sure Lowry will go heavy tanks. See, though, Lowry is in. Lowry is about to choose their commander and their start location. Same commander as last time, same support column, and we are going to have... Hopefully not too long of a game. Really, uh, really hope not too long of a game. And no, Hovercraft again. Hovercraft for Lowry. Light vehicle for Randy. And no sound because I forgot to turn it up again. There we go. Sound. Randy going for a couple of darts right off the bat. Two darts. Nothing else showing yet. Lowry on the other hand going for... Dagger, Quill, and more Dagger, so just wants to scout. Does not want to harass, just wants to scout. Cheapest possible thing that he can do. And so does Randy. Randy's not even going for... Okay, going for Mason after the darts, but did wait a bit just to have a slightly faster economy build. Makes sense in this map. You're going to have time. You have time to build up your economy before your opponent gets to you. No real harassment to worry about due to its size. Not early on, at least. I mean, within the next... Within a minute or so, yes. Or a minute and a half. 90 seconds in, you're going to start getting hit, but that's plenty of time if you want to build up without having to build up your military as well. 
And Randy is coming in here, actually a minute in for Randy, because the darts are faster than the daggers are, but ultimately not able to deal any damage, because the darts are just simple scout units. All they do is scout. And Scorcher getting the jump on a dagger, but not ultimately able to kill it. The dagger moving around and looks to be going for a metal extractor. Ooh, nice! I'm sure it likes this, although the defender's gonna kill it. Yeah, defender stops in his tracks. So I have to say, I'm sure it likes that, although that was a radar tower that's down, so Randy down on radar. Lowry, however, does have radar. I was gonna point out, right here is perfect. A couple glaives, sorry, a couple daggers here in nice order. This is a line! It's exactly what they want. Line of metal, solar, solar, metal. Beautiful line. I'm sure that Lowry is going to appreciate that. And Lowry is aware that that exists, by the way. It does did see it. These footprints here, that, that shows they saw it. And Lowry continued to consolidate, push out his ba their base, and Randy, on the other hand, is doing the same. Exactly the same, building up workers. Building up a bunch of Scorchers afterwards, because, as I mentioned before, Randy loves the Raider game. Randy pretty much just plays the Raider game the entire game. Except when they don't. But usually they do. And and darn it, why must players in chat remind me that I'm supposed to be tired? In case you're wondering, it is currently 7 a.m. We have been going on for five hours. Which hasn't really felt like five hours, because the players have been really good about being efficient. Like normally five hours in the tournament was like three and a half hours with an hour and a half of random waiting. This has been five straight hours. I think it was one two minute break basically and another five minute break when I went to get something to eat and that was it so the player's been really efficient and I very much appreciate that thank you all for being so fast now Lowry back to the game is building up some walls around their metal extractors just keeping them all defended with laser turrets making sure nothing can go around the back sneak around we saw that before in the last comic catcher game saw daggers just sneaking around Google Frog really good job with that and solar collectors coming up for Randy. More solar collectors. Always more solar collectors. Randy's ahead economically very slightly, as militarily. And there starts the 100 Scorchers. Actually, one of them already in the base, getting rid of a Lotus, but not doing too much beyond that. The Daggers stopping in his tracks. Doesn't actually get to deal any damage whatsoever. Randy is, Randy has morphed the commander, getting 17 build powers, is really pushing all that metal, not even bothering with the caretaker, just pushing the metal in, getting the Scorchers out. Gonna try to win with that, while Lowry on the other hand going for heavy dagger. So at this point, it comes down to micro. It's really what it's about. There are nearly a dozen daggers and half a dozen Scorchers. The daggers have the advantage, it's a matter of local advantages, but globally the daggers have the advantage. And the main base, still more daggers under construction. Well, quills and daggers. But Lowry is still having to deal with the fact that it is daggers versus scorchers, so it's tough to get a clean kill. It's tough for the daggers to get a clean kill. The scorchers, not so much. The daggers, yes. And a nice harassment attempt by Randy, but Lowry was well prepared for this. And Lowry actually going down to south and. Will it take out a metal extractor? No, but we'll take out the Lotus. If they take out the Lotus first, then the metal extractor will go down soon after. Although the Lotus even then is too much. And that that dagger has to get out of there, but able to kill a metal extractor nonetheless. And still we have 11 daggers. Well, 10, 11 in production. The Scorcher is a bit too close and destroys very handily Lowry's forces. So Lowry has the top third of the map aware. And Randy only in the bottom right quarter. Now, Randy is a bit less aware defensively, but a bit more aware offensively than Lowry is. So Lowry, a bit of a hard time pushing into raid without accidentally crashing into some of Randy's forces and thus dying. While at the same time, Randy does have a bit of an easier time telling where they can go if the center of the map is free or not. And that being said, though, this is not a bad setup. Actually, at this point, bearing in mind, I mean, Glaives do have line splash, so as the numbers increase, Glaives get better. I mean, against one scalpel, or sorry, one enemy unit, period, 
it doesn't make a big difference, but against a group of them, it becomes a big deal. There's a lot of damage. An air switch from Lowry at the six minute mark. We don't have any air switch from Randy. No, he is continuing to just push out as many scorches as possible. So I'm betting Raven. Yeah, Raven Swift. That is what we're going for. And a bunch of quills as well. Half a dozen quills, about three of them just been built. And a dozen daggers moving over to the northeast to get rid of the scorchers. And if they successfully do so, there's another half dozen scorchers over in the west side of the map. Or nine scorchers, actually, in the west side of the map. That'll be a pain to deal with. The ravens are coming up, and that will help thin out the forces. That's going to be the biggest thing they do, is thin out the forces. Because thinning out their forces is necessary. I mean, like I said, daggers do well against large groups, if there are large groups. But getting the daggers into large groups against scorchers is tough. Because the daggers just die. You just tend to lose daggers. So ways of thinning out forces, just allow the daggers to build up, would be best. But Randy... Randy is dealing quite a lot of damage here, does have the economic advantage to work in their favor. And switching over to Levelers too, which is going to stop those daggers in their tracks. We saw that before, we are seeing it again, or we will be seeing it again fairly soon. As Scorches come in, and... <laughs> Stupid. Sorry about that. And... Lowry taking a lot of damage here. However, this is one of the thing forces. The Ravens hit individual Scorchers from time to time, and admittedly the production rate is so high it doesn't really matter. And an air switch is coming in for Randy, well aware now of the Ravens that were already built. But yeah, the idea is to thin them out, and then your ground forces don't die as much. Not sure well it's going to work though. The daggers are kind of starting to lose their luster, especially with that leveler coming in. Just daggers don't. 110 damage, well, 55 damage a second, 110 damage every two seconds. That's not a huge amount of damage. Well, levelers will deal a lot more. I mean, levelers 220 every two seconds. And where is the... Okay. Scorchers deal 314 damage a second at closest range. That point out that. At point blank, it's 314. It's lower at a larger distance, but still, that's a lot of damage. And they can close the distance pretty easily. While well, the daggers, just like I said, Lowry losing one dagger pretty much every engagement. Now, is Lowry going to try to go for a comm snipe where it would be kind of useless in this map? This map does not support comm snipes. Now, factory snipe, that would work. Factory snipe would really do the trick here. Completely stem the tide of this and possibly give Lowry the match and outright. Caretaker sniping will be secondary to that, and it looks like... No, instead going for... Scorch sniping. Trying to take out as many scorches as possible, but not sure how it's going to work out. It does thin the force. That's true. It does thin them out, but. <sighs> not the best thing in the world to do. Sorry, I don't mean to yawn, but. Not the best thing in the world to do, but still, getting rid of a hawk. Keeping Randy from completely dominating the skies, but ultimately it's just a slow burn at this point. Lowry doesn't have anything to push back. Lowry's more just blocking, but not really doing any proper reversal. And Randy's getting more and more powerful as this happens. It's slow, but it's happening. It's certainly happening. And those Ravens would probably have been better as fax knife tools. At this point, there's half a dozen of them. But yeah, if I push in got rid of the airplane plant or got rid of the life vehicle. Actually, the life vehicle factory more so. It got rid of that. That takes five bombers. And that is how many there are, although I think it's because one of them died. But It takes five bombers. And, however, Randy just pushing in pretty hard here. Not much to be said about that. I mean, pushing along the west side of the map. It looks like the Stardust is the only thing keeping that commander alive. And the east side of the map, we have daggers coming in on the Scorchers, and actually are outnumbering the Scorchers enough that the Scorchers do go down clean. No, not cleanly. One dagger, still lost every time. But still, it's an advantage. Sort of. Daggers are 130 each. Actually, sorry, daggers are 85 each, Scorchers are 130 each. So ultimately, it is a bit of an even trade, but 
still. The Scorchers are just more numerous. That's all there's to it. There's more Scorchers. And at this point, Randy in the double digits for metal and energy. 108 metal. Thanks to Overdrive? Huh. Yeah, apparently the sheer number of metal extractors here along with the Overdrive effect, I guess? I think it's the sheer number of metal extractors means that Randy... Randy now has a massive economic lead by half. Easily by half, and... Not much more to be said about that, just so many caretakers, I mean... Basically, Lowry can't build up enough units in time. Lowry simply does not have the economy, and this is Randy's game, and Randy's gonna move on to finals, and Lowry, at best, gonna get third place again. And if Lowry is able to beat whoever wins between Google Frog and Cube, oh, sorry, loses between the two of them, not wins. What am I thinking? But if that happens, then it's going to be a bit of a problem. Now, Lowry is... Lowry is pretty much out, yeah. The Ravens are going to go down. Once the Ravens go down, not much to be done to thin out the forces. And on the ground, there are flails, but even then, not much. I think Lowry going for one last ditch attack. Daggers and maces. Direct assault with daggers and maces. Should be able to deal a decent amount of damage, but not honestly enough. There's just... There's not enough going for it, honestly. Three maces is not going to be able to deal with all the Scorchers that have been pushed out. Especially when the Scorchers are somewhere else. Although, to be fair, how many are there? I think most of the... Yeah, most of the army value is in... No, sorry, not most of it. That's only about half of it. Half of it is in Hawks. Half of it is... Not even half of it. Not much of it is in Light Vehicles. Heavy Tank Switch... We'll see, are there any Reapers yet? No, there aren't. There are... Sheesh. That's only worth 1890. I'm not sure where the rest of that money value is coming from. But I'm... I'm just gonna go with it's... Mostly, it's mostly the Hawks. All the Hawks are starting to go down pretty quickly. Thanks to the Flails. And at the same time we have... Well, more Ravagers coming in and... Randy not quite winning yet. I mean, this, this attack from Lowry is dealing a fair amount of damage, but now Randy's going to be pushing forward, getting rid of these maces. The maces should be able to kill a Ravager or two. But before they do, it's going to be all the maces dead. Not much more to say that. I mean, the maces simply do not have the range or the firepower to deal with the amount of health the Ravagers have. And of course, I mean, they can shoot all movements. That's good. But even with that, it's just not enough. I can't keep my eyes open. I'm gonna take a short break after this. So I apologize to people watching the stream. There's gonna be a short break after this so I can rest my eyes. Now, I don't mean I'm gonna be napping for an hour and a half. Just, just gonna get up, walk around a bit. And that should be waking me up a bit. Now, loudly. And Randy, I mean, Lowry doesn't have much going. Has scalpels, is trying to push with type counters. But even that's not being enough. I mean, the type counter, yeah, the Ravagers will be countered out by the scalpels. And there aren't enough maces that getting rid of them is rather tricky without resorting to banishers or levelers. I mean, like, banishers and levelers would be great to have right about now. But it's almost being built. Nope, nope, pure Ravager Reaper spam. That's it. Ravager Reaper Raven. So the Ravens could get rid of the Scalpels without too much issue, but then there's a lot of Swifts coming in here. How many Swifts are there? I think, assuming that Lowry is the only Swifts, there's like 18 Swifts to 9 Hawks. So the Swifts are going to win, assuming that the local advantage matches up with the global advantage, but yeah. The Swifts have a major advantage. And that being said, though, no, not even, not enough, not enough. Never mind, ultimately, the Hawks win. Seven left. That is ultimately how it goes, and the Hawks able to dodge out the Scalpel missiles. Not the flail ones, though. One of them does go down. I'm kind of surprised that Randy... Something I noticed about Randy is that... 
Actually, I guess, okay, I guess they're right. Rainy doesn't auto queue, but also seems to single unit spam from each factory. I think that is a total annihilation habit, but by now we should be into zero K habit, so I don't know. Just tends to spam one unit rather than going infinite queue and changing the ratio. Just spamming a single unit. That's all that Randy really does. And it's working in this case because there are enough factories. However, we do have bombers coming to get rid of these these Ravagers, which isn't going to be of much use, honestly. I mean, second pass bombers will be of some use, but first pass, if it's only one per, is not going to matter all that much. Scalpels coming in as well. That will help, actually. There's no scalpels coming in. That it should be enough. Ooh, wow, there's... 8, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. Okay, there's not a whole lot of scalpels anymore. They are dying fairly quickly. At just this point, Randy needs to attack. Yeah, Kinetable calling it. Lowry has lost. Randy just needs to attack and win. But Randy being way too defensive for their own good. Like, they scout it out. They know what's there. They know they can just go for it. I mean, okay, the, re the scalpels are a bit annoying. But other than that... And they're going down quickly enough, so I don't know. I'm a little confused, but that's kind of how they're going about it. This is also why I don't really like Complicated Redux, because players are really reluctant to push forward, because the one thing is, if you do push forward too soon, you end up with the units out front getting killed, and then reinforcements can't come in. I think that would be what Randy is concerned about, but frankly, he could push to win. Now, Lowry, on the other hand, needs... Perfect type countering and possibly some harassment as well, but on this map, harassment's fairly difficult. I just It's a long map. It's narrow and long. It's very much longer in one dimension than the other, which means getting around the sides is practically impossible. Square maps make it a lot easier to harass, whereas rectangular maps tend to make it a lot more of a corridor where harassment is basically impossible. And... That Reaper doing what it can. Not enough. It's not really doing what it can, but it doesn't matter. Lowry throws in the towel. That is game. That is match. And Randy goes on to finals. Lowry goes on to bronze match. Once that gets updated. So if you enjoyed that, we're going to take a small break and we're going to be on to QB and Google Frog. Wherever. Oh, wait. The first map was Quicksilver. So yeah, it'll be on Quicksilver. I'll be back with that in just a moment. Stay tuned.